open to our crack in here and uh, start off the week of the past four games positively. Um, but the rest has gone downhill. So we'll go into it. April 9th versus the Arizona Coyotes, a 5 nothing win. Our player of the game, goaltender Philip Grubauer. Grubauer, 39 saves, a shutout. Uh, stops 4.84 goals saved above expected. It's a 22nd shutout of his career, his fourth in Seattle. Uh, those 39 saves ties him for the most in a shutout in his own career. Seattle handles things early. Shane Wright scores uh, just about off the bat in this game. Uh, Seattle gets a 2 nothing lead into the second period. In the second period, they add a third goal. And then in the final period, they lock things up, adding two more on. So... Tough one, day, a good one there to get the week started, but the rest of the week was tough. April 11th versus the Sharks in the fan appreciation game, the last game of the season, a 1-3 to three loss. Our player of the game defender, Brian Dumoulin, defenseman Brian Dumoulin, one point on the one goal he scored. It was the only goal of the game for the Kraken, a one plus minus and three shots. Seattle looks sloppy throughout the course of this one. Uh, they make a push late. They try to make a push at least, and they're unable to beat Devin Cooley who plays really well for San Jose in that game. Uh, Seattle is only one is one of two teams in the NHL that lost twice or more to the 2023-24 Sharks. Uh, the Kraken losing twice to San Jose and the St. Louis Blues losing to them three times this year. April 13th at the Dallas Stars uh, in the first game of a back-to-back that begins the last road trip of the season. Uh, a 1-3 to three loss. Our player of the game forward, Kyler Yamamoto, who gets back into the lineup. Yamamoto, one goal, one point, one plus minus, three shots, and one hit on the day. Uh, the Kraken looked decent for a good amount of this game, uh, but just can't do much of anything offensively until it's too late, really. Um, and and just like the story of the season, they, they can't do enough offensively, puts a lot of pressure on them defensively, and they eventually fall to a better team. April 14th in the second game of that back-to-back, the Kraken lose to the Blues by a score of 1-4. to four. A player of the game for Jared McCann, one goal, one point, and two shots. Seattle doesn't play bad, honestly, uh, throughout the course of this one. But again, just the mistakes, uh, the lack of finishing, the lack of quality to, uh, offensively ends up hurting Seattle. They've lost their last three, and they just really don't look too good. Um, and it's obvious that some change will be ne- needed to be made uh, this off season. I mean, just looking at it, you know, there's not a lot you can say that's different. Um, with this Kraken team, I mean, it's just offensive struggles, lapses defensively here and there. There were a few goals in the last few games that were kind of soft against the Kraken, but I mean, at this point, it doesn't really, the goalies have played well throughout the course of the year. They're not the problem and they shouldn't be viewed as that. Um, it's just, you're going to need to add this off season if you want to be competitive, right? I think that. You know, with some of the bad luck that they've had in the injuries, you know, they should, you know, get some positive bounce back from some players this upcoming year. But, you know, having just Shane Wright come up um, isn't going to be enough. You're going to need to add via trade. I I don't think Jake Gensel or Sam Reinhart are going to go to free agency. I think both of the teams that they're currently on will resign them. Um, And there have been some folks, oh, you well, uh, there aren't any guys up for trade. How do you know that? Are you an NHL GM? Hmm? I don't think I trust, you know, AI guy number 44 on Twitter to tell me <laughs> if guys are going to be available via trade. It happens every offseason. Someone gets pride away or someone's on the market. Uh, and the Kraken are going to need to be able to add with that. They've got the draft picks. They said at the deadline, uh, general manager Ron Francis said at the deadline that, you know, they don't want to hang on to all of their draft picks that they have. Uh, they would like to trade them and move them as assets. So w- that will be a big thing for them. So uh, we'll go into it with injury news here as there's some uh, and some team news as well. April 9th for Jared McCann and defenseman Vince Dunn uh, were considered day to day at the team's practice that day with McCann having a lower body injury. Vince Dunn had a upper body injury. Uh, April 10th, the next day, uh, head coach Dave Hagstall said that the team had been relying on goaltender Philip Grubauer in recent games to get starts often uh, due to Joey Decor dealing with a minor nagging injury. 
Um, Decord has since played in two games uh, following that, so he should be good to go now. And then April 13th, defenseman Vince Dunn was not with the team as they began their road trip in Dallas and won't join them, which effectively shuts down his season per Jeff Baker of the Seattle Times. Dunn finishes out his season only having played two games after the hit he suffered in Calgary from Flames uh, Flames forward Martin Pospisil. So tough there. We go over here to team news on the 11th. Uh, fan appreciation day of the day that the Kraken lost to the Sharks. Uh, the Kraken team awards were announced after the game. For Jaden Schwartz wins the 2023-24 Guile Fielder Award given to the player who best exhibits the qualities of perseverance, hustle, and dedication to hockey. Jared McCann wins the Pete Muldoon Award, the award that goes to the player judged to be the most valuable to the team's on-ice success as voted on by local media. Hey, that's me. Uh, and players... And then goaltender Joey Decord won both the Fan Favorite Award and the Three Stars Award. That Three Stars Award is given to the player who gets the most mentions on the Three Stars of the game at Climate Pledge Arena throughout the course of the season, from the Kraken, that is. On the 12th, the team reassigned forwards Shane Wright, Logan Morrison, and Ryan Winterton to the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Uh, Shane Wright had to go back. He was one game away from burning his ELC. Uh, and with Morrison and, Morrison and Winterton not really playing that much, over the past few games uh, leading into this, it made sense to send, sense to send them back down the Coachella Valley so they can prepare for the upcoming playoff run that the Firebirds will have. Uh, that'll wrap it up with the Kraken. Uh, they sit at a 33 win, 34 loss, 13 overtime loss record. They are at fifth in the Pacific Division with 77 points. Their final two games of the season coming up on the road. April 16th at the Winnipeg Jets is a 5 o'clock start. That's 5 o'clock Pacific time. That is on Root Sports. That's unfortunately the final game that will be on Root Sports for the year because April 18th at the Minnesota Wild uh, is a 4 o'clock start. That's the final game of the season for the Kraken, and it's on ESPN. So you won't be able to hear out uh, the Roots folks um to close out that game that game will be on espn i'm sure the espn folks thought this was going to be a better game uh when they scheduled it uh but not so much with hey charles hey jen hey where are you gonna watch all those cracking away games cracking away games making a push i was thinking of coming here just because rough and tumble is the home of circling channel sports only if that's okay with you i mean i love that idea hope to see you here